All right, I'm going to play through uh, Mario Land 2 because I, I'm feeling nostalgic and I want to chill. So, this is using the Game Boy Color mode, which I haven't used before, so. We'll give it a try, like this. Anyway, if you're watching later on YouTube, thanks for clicking. Let me just do an obligatory capture card reset, just so it doesn't do anything funny. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. Like, this is how I, I would have played this game anyway, like on my Game Boy Color. So, I mean, this was very different to the first one. Like, this... Mario looks like Mario. The physics are more like Mario physics. It's a big step up. That's a nice soundtrack as well. Oops. It's kind of crazy that after this one, there weren't many handheld version of Mario games. Like, it all went to Wario after this one. I mean, platformer Mario. Like, there was the remake of the NES Mario game, but other than that, there weren't really many new ones for a while. <laughs> the feather. I forgot the, the feather in the cap. Yeah. That's right. It has it has this jump as well. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what Mario this is supposed to be. Wait, the fireball. I don't remember this. Okay. It's just me. It's just me. If we get bored with this color palette, I can I can swap to one of the others. I, I just messed up, didn't I? There's no fixing this. I wish I could do the color swapping on the fly, but I have to bring up the settings menu. I need to look up how that works on this particular controller. Ah! At least it's forgiving, it still keeps me big. This one I didn't play as much of. 
don't know why. Like, I, I, I enjoyed Wario a lot more. And, uh... The first one, weirdly enough. It's not that this one... I didn't like it, I just... I don't know, I guess I just found the other two more interesting. Wait, I can't... Oh, it automatically, like, does this when you hold down, so you can't crouch jump into here. Unless... No, yeah, that's... Okay, that is crouch, no, but if I hold it, it just becomes that. Alright. child was screaming a little. Take it. I'm kind of a... Oh, it's water. Okay. I can't- I'm kind of afraid to touch it. Someone has made, um, a ROM hack of this that makes it full Game Boy Color support, so it, like, looks really nice, but... I wanted to play the cartridge, you know? There's something satisfying about getting the cartridge out. Especially now, because I got, uh, these cases for it, so it's like, kind of like how the DS cases were. It's got the artwork and everything on it, it's nice. So they're not just in this, this box. Most of my other ones are in this box, because all the, all the boxes were made out of cardboard, so they're like long gone. <laughs> I feel bad about that one. I don't know if this is supposed to be water, because it's like... It's got this weird shape, and then it's also hanging from the ceiling. The classic Mario game, you're worried. Why? Because it's... I guess the color palette makes it look like jam now. From the other night's experience. Yeah, but that was an outlier. In this game I'm pretty comfortable with. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> See, I need attraction. And yeah, that'll be fine. Mario Land 2 is, is fine. I know what I'm in store for. More or less. Again, just like... If you want... Just look at the rest of that playthrough. The rest of the playthrough was very chill and relaxing and nice. It's just for some reason the last boss in that game. I don't know why. Uh, we're talking about Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, just for those interested. Like, out of context conversation. Crap. 
I was trying to go for the heart. That's fine. Admittedly here, this is where, like, I would swap the color palette to something green. But I guess this is authentic, this is, like, the Game Boy color. I mean, it did the best it could with older games. At least it gave you the option of just picking whichever one made sense. I mean, at the time, this was mind-blowing. I was like, what? Look at this. It somehow magically puts colors into my Game Boy games? What? How does it know what colors to use? cheap. <laughs> How was I supposed to know that was there? Just mystery block in the way with I'm going to jump. That's cheap. I could also, when I heard this music as a kid, There was something I couldn't help do. You'll know when it comes up. It'll, it'll be stuck in your head and then you'll do it as well. Cha cha cha! That's what I used to do. I am the old man. At least in the context of Twitch. It's catchy. You're 33 and this, this game as a child. That's a shame. I mean, when I played it, it was a long time after its release. Oh, it almost got me again. It would have been, I don't know, like three, four years after its release. I had a Game Boy Color, and this is, like, one of the original Game Boy games, so... What year is it from? Uh... Hold on. I have the box here. 1992, so I would have played it at, like, 96, 97? Maybe? Whenever Pokemon was out. 
My uncle had a Game Boy, so I got to play some of the earlier games. No, I'm sticking to Bunny. It's a nice game, it's like... For what it is, it's really good. I mean, definitely not as detailed as Mario 3 on the NES, but definitely more detailed than the original Mario. Sometimes Game Boy games could be pretty uh, detailed. You had a Commodore 64? I didn't even have that. I had, uh, like... Like a 486 computer. But I had that up until oof, longer than I should have. It's a trivial, but it's fine. It's not a very long game, but it is enjoyable. I don't know if I'll get through it in one sitting. Wait, did I do everything in here? No, see, I didn't do the, uh... I didn't do this stage. I'm doing all of them. We have to experience all the stages. all the stages or get hit by a bee and shrink. Oh. Oh, <laughs> can't go further down. I've made the error. No, I have to, I have to abandon. <laughs> Mushroom's gone anyway. Okay, be smarter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
I do anything useful with it. Uh, are these safe? I don't remember if these are safe. Okay, they are. Hello, egg. It's it's honestly been a very long time since I played this, so memories of it are very vague. One thing I've been meaning to do is, like, I need to play Galaxy and Galaxy 2. Because that's, I think that's the only one, well, in terms of big Mario games, it's, it's the only one I haven't played. And for some reason it was just not included with the 3D collection they released. I thought they were going to release it separately on its own, but, uh, it's, no. It never happened, so... Nom, 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 nom. Welcome to the Turtle Zone. <laughs> I'm, I'm swimming in, um... I don't know, some strawberry flavored beverage at sunset. Remembering 1996 is like recalling the plot of Bananas in Pajamas. And a whole lot of people aren't going to recognize that. I don't think that show was international. But if you don't know what we're talking about here, it was a kid's show of uh, just two gigantic bananas. I mean, dudes dressed in banana costumes. There were, what, like, three teddy bears? And a rat that was always up to, up to travel? And the dude was always very shifty and he'd be like, Trust me, I'm a rat. That's about all I remember from that show. Oh yeah, right, the, <laughs> the boxing glove sharks. What an enemy. Dude, this, this song is great. Kinda has Mega Man vibes to it. Not... Not all of it. But like, there's a particular... part. that is. Underwater stages have always just... I'm torn between them. Sometimes they can be fun, and sometimes they're just... a bit nightmarish compared to other stages. What was that show that was bears in it? Yeah. Yeah, the three of them, I remember. I mean, you could say that about a lot of kids' shows. Sometimes they have a weird premise to them. There was no show stranger than that. Do you remember a show called The Animals of Farthingwood? Now, Americans won't be familiar with this one, but Europeans will. Because it did air in Europe. 
that show was like, what, what? <laughs> I can't believe they showed that to kids. Like, I, I don't think there'd be any way that would be a kid's show these days. Take it. It would have been called something else, I'm sure, in other European countries, but... The plot of it was, uh, these animals, they had their home destroyed by humans at the start of it, and so it's kind of like, it's almost like a soap opera, but it follows animals, you know, journeying, journeying their way to try and find a new home. And along the way... <laughs> Quite a bit of them die to some gruesome circumstances caused by, you know, humanity. Sometimes it's just a case of, well, they ran into a wild animal and, yeah, it's just mother nature. It's cruel. But, man, that, that show was just... I don't know why we watched it, but, yeah, it was very, very grim for a kid's show. I think even in the first episode, like, one of the, one of the main animals gets, uh, killed off. Like, immediately. I think the kids' show that had the absolute darkest uh, ending. If you remember Dinosaurs, which was like, uh, was made by Jim Henson's company. You know, kind of like The Simpsons, but with dinosaurs. And they were, I guess, puppets. The show was very lighthearted, you know, the baby would hit the father with a saucepan. Comedy in, in its very nature. But the ending to that show, I didn't know about this until years later. Um, but it, it just has a really dark ending. <laughs> like, the ending of it pretty much is that um, they, they, yeah, not the mama. Do you know how that show ends, Messiah, out of curiosity? It's just... I forgot how I even learned about this. It was, it was definitely through a random discussion one day. And then just out of curiosity. Like, just looked up the show. Not really. Uh, okay, yeah, I mean, the gist of it is... Um, the father basically messes up at work and brings on the start of the Ice Age. And so the whole time, the whole episode, they're kind of trying to come to terms with what, what's about to happen. And trying to, pre like, some of them are trying to prevent it, some of them are, like, very, uh, you know, oh, it's nothing. And the very last scene in the TV show is just the families, like, at home, huddled together, you know, spending time with one another. And then the credits roll and the house, the snow starts. It starts snowing. And the house just starts getting covered in snow. And you see it starting getting buried by the snow. And that's the ending of the show. It's like, obviously, they're not going to survive. You know, that's the hint is like, well, no, it's not going to be okay. Um, <laughs> hey Arnold and Fairly Odd Parents had dark endings. I haven't seen Hey Arnold's ending. Or her fairly odd parents. Now I'm kind of curious, but that one, when I heard about it, I was like, oh man, no, I. Because I swear we used to watch that show every week, like the dinosaurs, but I'd never seen the ending to it. So I, it, it might explain that maybe they just chose not to air it here because it probably upset a bunch of kids. But that's the final scene in the show is like the house just getting buried on the snow. Yeah, how did Hey Arnold end, out of curiosity? I 
I mean, damn, kids' shows like having hard lessons on life. That's basically what it is. It might be one of these things that maybe I did actually see and I've just blocked it from memory and maybe hearing about it might jog it again. Wait, if you recall, Arnold dies from some illness or something and finally reunites with his parents and gets to finish school in heaven. Jeez. Oh man. Paraphrasing, but something like that. Gotcha. Oh man, why does that feel familiar? It might be one of those things that I just played off as just an episode and maybe didn't realize the severity of it. I kind of have to say it, um... It's on animals... animal... <laughs> animals are farther than wood level of, like, depressing. <laughs> yeah, no, animals are farther than wood. Ugh, man, that- that was a show, I'll tell ya. I think... I think I could watch Hey Arnold and see it, cause... I believe it's on Prime, so I'll, I'll check it out. Just watch- I'll just watch the last episode, just out of morbid curiosity. by the fox fam. See, that's the thing, I don't remember what happened. I just remember that death was like a common occurrence in that series. It was just a main character would be there and then would be gone, pretty much. And sometimes it was just like demonstrating mother nature and other times it was just like, oh no, humanity like royally screwed them. Also, we are inside a whale. <laughs> Just consider what is going on. I mean, the colors probably aren't helping here, it's making it look worse than what it is. Okay, I was worried that might actually be lava because of the skeleton. People cutting trees is all you remember. That was probably the start. Do you remember one episode where they were crossing a highway? I'm- I'm going to bring up, like, deep childhood memory here. <laughs> That's the one that- that sticks with me, is just that episode where they were crossing a highway. And how many of them didn't make the- the crossing of the highway? I wonder if that shows, like, on any streaming service. kind of makes it seem like it's a, it's a ghost house. A little bit. I guess it kind of is. Spooky skeleton fish. It does make it. 
so much easier. You didn't see the free eye episode? Oh man. Okay. Well, I, I'll, I'll leave it at that. That artwork. It's just, it's just that uh that Mario has seen some shit. I, I remember Mario Zone, I don't remember the entrance looking like that. The other the other show was fairly odd parents, which that one was another one that had, like, a very comedic tone to the show, so if it had a dark ending, jeez. Fairly Odd Parents is, is a bit lighter than some of those other shows, but... I mean, it's in there, it's like, you know... If you're at least the age of 20, you'll know of that show. dodge damage both of those times somehow. I remember for the longest amount of time people thought that Blue's Clues like just had a very abrupt thing with uh, Steve leaving. And there was all the, these urban legends that the, the person that played Steve died or something. a show with an accordion and a car under a bed. Oh, I know that. I know what show you're talking about. Uh-oh. It was Johnson and Friends. You're talking about Johnson and Friends. Not sure how uh, widespread that show was, but that's that's the show. I know when it comes to kid shows, like we're more likely to have overlap with Europe than America. With the exception of uh, like stuff from Nickelodeon. That's the overlap we have with America, pretty much. I love localizations of things as well, like... I learned about, um... Pokemon names in German. Like, Lickitung is Schlup, which I think is just hysterical and so perfect that I kind of wish that was his name. <laughs> it's just... It's so much better. <laughs> hmm. 
next time I play a Pokemon game, like, I'm going to nickname my Lickitung that. There were some other ones that were pretty good as well. But that one, that one got me. I was like, that is, that is amazing. I, I want that to be the English name as well. Hang on. German Pokemon names. This is a rabbit hole, but like, there was, there was another one. Yeah, Squirtle's called Shiggy. <laughs> that's not that's not the one I'm thinking of. Hold on. Oh, where is it? Sorry, chat. I know this is a bit of a. Destruction. Yeah, Grimer was Slimer, and Muck was Slimock. <laughs> oh, man. But there were some good ones. There were some good ones. That's right, Snorlax, that's the one I was thinking of. Would you like to take a guess as to what Snorlax's name in German was? Ah, <laughs> uh, it was, it was Relaxo. Again, I, I just, I just wish that was the English name. That's what I'm calling my Snorlax from now on, the Relaxo. Wait, the Hey Arnold thing was some sort of multifaceted because the movie where he passes it was cancelled or something, but the scenes are still there. Parts of the movie was used for episode. It is shown what was aired, that he finally finds where his parents are, but if the movie's any implication, you know what happens, it's weird. Yeah, I mean... I have vague memories of it. But I wonder if, like, that might be the reason why the show kind of met its demise was because of that. I also forgot- <laughs> it's been a while since I've played one of these kind of games, and I forgot there was a timer. Oh, no. I thought I'd roll on- no, I, I have to- Okay, I see. I see. You're gonna, you're gonna get this stuck in your head. You won't be able to listen to this without hearing that. No. Bell. There are quite a few cartoons from that era that just got ended abruptly.
Okay, hold on. I'm gonna undock it for a sec. Give me a sec, chat. I'm changing the color palette. Let's do a different color palette. <laughs> now Mario's blue. Alright, there we go. But you know what? This, uh, this kind of looks a bit more natural. Like, look at this. Mario's not that saturated. I think it looks cool. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, this is nice. It's... That's the thing, is... I guess you pick the color palette that... seemed to suit the game the best. Like, you weren't gonna win all the time. Saturated Mario? You want, like, blood... blood red Mario? Tomato soup Mario. I do remember Trapdoor, actually, now that you say that. Mrs. Ham, do you remember Soup Opera? I don't know if that, like, I know that it originated from Canada. And it played in France, I believe, just because of Montreal stuff, but like... I don't know if it played anywhere else, but it was like a... Very short, uh... It's like two minutes, I think. Maybe even shorter. Yeah, it was like stop-motion animation of vegetables rolling around. And it had an opera singer in the background. And kind of hip-hop music. With the opera. <laughs> That's what it was. That was the music. The old Mario games are brutal. Hardest game you played was Aladdin on Genesis. I think that might have been the Disney Interactive game that I heard was like infamous, where the Super Nintendo version was completely different to the Genesis one. And one version was harder, but I couldn't remember which one. Oh, I don't find this one to be too bad. I think I'm fine. Whoops. That's all you remember, the veggies on the table? Okay. I'm trying to think of the hardest platformer. I mean, I don't know, I found Mega Man to be harder than Mario. But it might be- it might just be because of the sheer amount of time I spent with Mario games that I guess I just didn't see it as as hard as it probably is. I will say one of the most amusing things that I saw, um, I went over to a friend's house one day and, uh, this was during the Wii era. So they had gotten the first Mario on Virtual Console and the guy's dad decided to give Mario a try because he had never played it before. So he was like, I'm going to give Mario a try. So he sat down and watched him. And this was his gameplay. So he wasn't he wasn't holding the run button, right? Like I am. But it was more like, you know, this was him. Like he was just so afraid to do anything. And then... In 1-1, one, one, like, the very first Goomba got him, and we just- we laughed so damn hard, just because it was just like, Oh, you poor man. <laughs> Dying to the 1-1 one, one Goomba, right away. I 
I, uh, I can't play Mario games without holding the run button. I remember playing Sonic 2 on the Genesis with friends. Made it to the final boss after 4 to 6 hours died. Got to the home screen in level 1. Learned about loss that day. Yep. Games where you had to do it in one sitting. Or it was like, bad luck, start again. I never played any of the Sonic games, but I know exactly what you're talking about, that feeling. Ah! I, I should just stop coming in this room. No. This, this room is horrible. Stop. There are still games from childhood that I have not finished. That I, I would one day want to finish. One of them, Battletoads, but that one's like considered one of the hardest games of all time. Um, another one called Air Fortress, this was, which was made by the developers that made Kirby. And the best way to describe it is like it's kind of like a mix of a shmup and uh, Metroid. It's got Metroid style exploration, but. Um, then you do these stages in between that, uh, you're in a, a ship and, yeah, you just shoot stuff, so. It's like a, a merge of the two. Um, but you go, you go do a stage where you're shooting in the ship, then you get to the Air Fortress, and you explore it, you set off a detonator, and then you have to escape the fortress before it blows up. And it's so tense, I just remember just, you know, Things go dark and you, you're kind of trying to find your exit. And as the fortress is getting closer to explode, it starts shaking and it's, it's just such a tense... It was such a tense and scary game, I could never finish it. Because it got, it got really hard. I mean, NES difficulty here, but... I think conceptually it was pretty cool. And yeah, made by the people that ultimately made Kirby. Ever see a game with messed up game over screens? Donkey Kong had a few. Which one? I just recently played the trilogy. Oh man. Donkey Kong trilogy. I love it. I still think Donkey Kong Country 3 is the superior game. <laughs> oh man, that was funny. No, I, I do I do recognize Donkey Kong Country 2 is, is the better one. I, I understand. But there were times where that game was kicking my ass and I just could not help but just think. Yes, go play Donkey Kong Country 2. It's the classic, it's the one everyone loves. No, 2, two is great, like the soundtrack to 2 is definitely the best. And I think the combination of Dixie and Diddy works really well. But I, I will say, like, uh, for me, 3 was just... It was good. I liked it. it. I I could not believe when I found out just that it was... Not, yeah, it was. it's like a very uh, jarring game for some. Like... It's very divisive. Which did not think it would be, but... Oh no, this color palette is way better. It's almost like it was specifically designed for this. I can't remember, but it was the screen where it implies King K is gonna murder the kids like a silhouette over the crib. That was Donkey Kong Country 3, when they're in a crib. I don't rem I don't remember <laughs> interpreting it that way. Like, you're describing Donkey Kong Country 3's game over screen, and now I'm, like, questioning my childhood, like, did I- did I just miss the subtext? I, th 
think the most brutal game over screens I remember. Castlevania um, and Metro, just Samus exploding. Chinese knockoffs go way overkill. Yeah, but those aren't official. Like, yeah. The bootleg games are just their own beast. There's that cursed uh, NES, sorry, Super Nintendo ROM hack that did the rounds. Um, what was it called? I'm convinced that it wasn't like a real game and someone just did a shit post of it. I think, oh, Hong Kong 97. That's what it was called. It was called Hong Kong 97 and it's something I cannot stream. Because <laughs> it's, it's just that curse. It's like, it's barely a game. And the way it's framed is like, some company was trying to get this game published as a protest. And I don't know how, yeah, I mean, it's like, a, the whole thing is covered in urban legend, but the game is barely a game. And, I mean, the game over screen in that one is, like, actually a dead person, so, you know. But the premise of it is just so absurd. So, we don't count those in terms of, uh, game over screens, because, yeah, you can put anything on a game over screen if you're a bootleg. Okay, this color palette is much better. I think we can agree already. It's just like, better contrast, it's not- everything is not red, and the Goombas are brown, which is perfect. It's like, yeah, this works. This is bearable. The disappearing blocks. Yeah, I don't know, man. Product of the 90s. The old disappearing block. I can't remember if this game had uh, alternate exits or not. I assume it didn't. Oh man, they they tried their best, but <laughs> it's so it's so much easier to overlook frame dips when it comes to the Game Boy. I oh, know you're more you're more willing to excuse them. This looks much better. I mean, okay, the selection, the stage selection does not look great. Be oh no, wait, this one does, but the previous one didn't. The Mario one did not, it looked out of place. But this looks good. What are, the what are those things meant to be? I, I'm kind of afraid to jump on them. <laughs> you know what, let's, there's, there's no benefit to it. Wait a minute. I feel like I've seen those 
Those enemies are in Parodius, like the, the umbrellas. And they're also in a graveyard. I wonder if it's like a Japanese folklore thing. That's not a thing in other Mario games. Like, if you pick up a mushroom, it doesn't transform you back to basic. It just gives you points. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. That's a detail I did not remember. It makes me want to play Super Mario World. I feel like I haven't played vanilla Super Mario World in just about as long. Oh, you can't spin jump when you're a rabbit. Okay. I think one of the side of Samara games you played was a GBC game. Can't remember the name. It was like a game that had 25 or so minigames to play. One was where you play as Yoshi and he is trying to water his garden that he worked really hard on. And enemies come and fuck up his plants. If you lose, he cries hopelessly and they laugh at him or something. A game that had 25 minigames. The only thing that comes to mind is like Game & Watch Collection, but I don't think it was that. On Game Boy Color, hmm. Yeah, these umbrellas, like the... Yeah, I mean, try and look it up, I'm kind of intrigued. I'm almost out of time. It was Game Boy Color, interesting. Ghost Goombas? I've been playing this for about an hour. I mean, this is what, golden coin number three? It's just, I guess it depends what... What 
classifies as 100%ing the game. I know this isn't a very long game, but I don't think it's as short as I think it is. Oh no, there are hit there are hidden stages. Hmm. Well, I don't remember where they are. That was a secret exit. So, uh maybe it might be worth looking up where these secret exits are. I really don't remember. Unless someone has an answer. <laughs> so then I don't have to look it up. Stick to low ground. Ugh. Okay, well, semi stick to low ground. Just as long as I'm not flying over anything. Okay, this is normal goal. Oh, see, so it's got the up arrow. Maybe it, it is very obvious where things are. Yes! <laughs> I kind of want to go back to the other worlds. What what I what what is that what is this? What is that? What is that supposed to be? Okay, it's supposed to be spooky. What is it? A, a ghost fish? It's the only thing I can think of is like flopping around like a fish. Ah, crap. Ah, crap.
Oh, ho, 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 I'm gonna stick to this because I feel like this is better. Oh, the roof. I was like, wait, what hit me? The roof. The roof hit me. Visuals for this game are great. Wait, I'm already up. I'm already four coins in. No, but see, I don't think I've a hundred percent it. Like, I, I think I definitely haven't gotten the hidden stages. So, for now, I'll clear the map, and then at the end, I'll look at what's hidden. What's this? Scroll up. Wow. <laughs> ah, no idea. I feel like my friend's uh, father just dying to stray Goombas. The problem is, I'm thinking that they're going to drop sooner than what they do. They're very low gravity. I will say this was one good mechanic of this. Because, like, you can start the spin jump when you're already in the air just by pressing down. I don't think Mario World had that, like, you could only just press X to spin jump, but you couldn't start it from mid-jump whenever. Look at how angry that hill is in the background. Land. Oh, this this is like this is what I think of when when I think of this game is this bubble. I forget how this works, to be honest. Oh, that's some crusty frame rate. <laughs> That's where it ends anyway. We have 
having a hell of a time finding that game collection. Yeah, I mean, just based on the loose description, I can't think of anything that would match it other than Game & Watch collection. But, yeah, I don't know. Was it something official? Maybe it was something bootleg and that's why it was cursed. <laughs> I think it was a fever dream and then you saw a video featuring a few videos back. Okay, hang on. Let's see. I'm gonna see if I'm just on a loose search. I mean, yeah, the only thing that comes up is, like, Game & Watch Gallery and Mario and & Yoshi, which is a puzzle game, so it's not what you're describing. The, I think another way to go about it might be just to look up a list of- I know this might be tedious, but a list of released Game Boy games. And maybe just seeing a title might- might remind you. I don't want a Mandela effect here, <laughs> but that would probably be the way to find it. I don't know. Sometimes that's with that sort of stuff, internet detectives are good at it, like Reddit. You just put up a thread, you briefly describe what you're looking for, and someone will remember it. I'm trying to remember how this works. I think this is the only one I haven't done. What does 999 mean? Oh, dear lord. I just spent 999 coins. Wait, five? That's, that's, that's a ripoff. <laughs> Five up, five up for a thousand coins. No. I thought that was like a warp pipe or something, that it was going to take me where I needed to go. Not yet. Can you guess who that is on the roof? Oh, there we go. Macro zone. All right, found it. Oh. <laughs> that was cheap. So, hey, Gammy, how's it going? This music's great. This is like a mix between Mario and Mega Man here. Wow, those, those ants, huh?
the, the ant with the cannon appears to be slowing the game down significantly. I mean, distinct enemies. Oh no, I, I, I have made a poor choice here. I've made a very poor choice. <laughs> trying to get me to do. Given the spiky ants, this is probably not a bad choice. It seems to be working. Why is the red color palette so... I mean, this color palette seems more normal, like it seems to be behaving. It seems to make sense. The other one, I mean, it looked cool in some parts, but I guess largely impractical. Oh no. reach it in time. Much like Super Mario World, just flight is, uh, is good. It's gonna make me get the bunny. Uh. Oh look, I transformed into what I already was. Yeah, look at, look at this color palette, how nice it looks. Goombas are brown, the Koopas are, look normal, Mario looks kinda normal. pretty well. Just when I saw the, the option blue, I was like, hmm, that's probably not the best one, because I, I guess aside from water, what else would you want to be blue? But now it makes sense. It's like the background is blue, which you would want.
I don't know why I was carrying that. House? I mean, I guess there's spider webs, I can see it. Oh. <laughs> I feel bad about it. Hey! Give me my one up. the best spot. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> okay. I just needed one more hit. I would have got on that. Big deal, just the rat that ate the coin. Okay, so I'm missing one. I've missed a world somewhere. Where have I missed a world? Storm tree. How do I get to the storm tree? It auto picked it. Ugh, no. Oh no, that's the castle. I see. All right, where have I missed the world? I've done that one. Am I going crazy or have I- wait. I've gone around this map, I, I don't see where I've missed a, a world. That's Turtle World, I've been there. Don't- this is a hidden stage thing, isn't it? that's just bonus stage in that cave. Mushroom's just the starting stage. This just leads to Wario's thing. Okay. Well, this is casual playthrough, so hang on. 
um, then leave. Yeah, how do you, how do you get to this world? I'm looking at this map and I'm like, I've been everywhere. X. Unless this is something. Hang on. Oh, you know what? I bet it is. I'm not making tea right now. No, I was looking up guides. <laughs> you think I have all the kit to brew tea here in this tiny ass room? Did you did you hear a tap? There's no tap. I didn't hear water. I mean, don't get me wrong. Tea sounds good, but. I'd rather figure out where I'm going first. Six golden coins. I'm gonna look up the wiki for it. Oh, wait! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never mind, I'm here! <laughs> Apparently, it was uh, just take the exit here. Okay, we're fine. I figured it out. Space pig. Oh, the gravity is weird. Okay, I see how it works now. It's like, almost like weird swimming, that's how it controls. Uh oh. Ah! Oh! <laughs> didn't know it's gonna do burst damage. Oh, 
Ha! <laughs> this would be wild in 1992. Oh, it was. Like... Just considering how detailed this was, given it was a Game Boy game, and, you know, the alternative was the NES. And, uh, I mean, sure, the Super Nintendo would have been out, I think, but... Like, to get this quality on the handheld was kind of insane. There are some games on the Game Boy that are just way better than what you could play on the NES, like Link's Awakening is one of them. Just... This game reminds you of something, but you just can't get your head around what. Okay. Uh, let's, let's think. What does it remind you of? The, the music? The gameplay? that it's in space. The music plus gameplay. Interesting. I mean, other than Mario, I don't know what else to say. The slow gravity thing. I mean, one of the games I was describing, like, Air Fortress had low gravity. It was in a space suit, but that was on the NES. Oh no, okay, it's like swimming. Ah, I got crushed! <laughs> I mean, the game that I was talking about looks like this. Wow, that's a tiny image, but like, you're a little space suit person. And the gravity is pretty much like Mario. Like what you saw there. Is there a SNES version of that game? Uh, of this game, Mario Land? No. Of the game that I put on screen, I have no idea. Maybe, because Kirby kind of borrows a little bit from this. And Kirby music is kind of similar to this, so maybe it's a Kirby game. It has to be Mario related. I don't know then. Ah! Because the Mario games on the Super Nintendo were, were pretty limited. It was Super Mario World, Super Mario World 2, in terms of platformers. And then you had all those off-spin ones, like the ones that taught you stuff. Oh boy. And then you had uh, the puzzle games. I mean, other than that... Oh, and Mario Paint. Mario Paint was so awesome. I kind of wish I could play it properly. But of course you need, like, you know, the, the mouse peripheral or anything for it. Maybe... 
don't know if I said anything, but Mario Odyssey has space levels. Yeah, it does. But I'm guessing we're talking about retro stuff here. It could also be maybe you saw a ROM hack, because... I know a few ROM popular ROM hacks that do space levels like this. Maybe it wasn't something... Oh, that's... That's very shifty. Ah, I got it. Like, maybe it wasn't something official, but still featured Mario. Because one ROM hack I played called Janked Up Mario Party had a stage that looked almost identical to this. And it had, um... It had the Mario Galaxy music in it, so it was, like, very... Oh, do I have to stomp you as well? What? Yeah, I don't know. If it's something that you saw when you were younger, it's possible that maybe it's just a mix of memories. Because I'll tell you what, there's one game that I remember seeing my uncle play. And I don't remember- I don't remember it. All I remember was that it kind of looked semi... Like it was on a isometric perspective, from what I remember. And I guess it featured... Like, worms or something? And you had to climb? I can't- like, I, I genuinely can't remember, but I just have these vivid memories of... Just some obscure game that may or may not exist, like maybe I'm just not remembering correctly, but I tried looking for it and couldn't find it. So I know the feeling, like stuff like that happens. So I could look at 100%ing it, or I could just reach the end. I mean, it's pretty casual. Let's just look at Mario Land 2 Hidden Exits. Okay, uh, I'm gonna get a look at them. Okay, so, we got a list of them. Do we want to do the hidden exits, or should I just go to the end? So... Apparently, the hidden exit in this one is in stage two. So in this stage, there's a hidden exit. Okay, see so now, this, this looks more normal. It doesn't look like jelly. I mean, it's still weird, but uh, uh, at least it looks normal. See if I can find it on my own. Sometimes I guess it's just going through the bonus level exit. I 
I feel like I went down here though. Or am I wrong? This is just bunny ears. Yeah. The exit, right? Okay, don't don't go to the exit. Let's see what I can find. Good job. <laughs> you found death. Oh no! <laughs> you telling me I can't squeeze in there? That looks promising over there, but I need bunny. It's probably that. I don't think there's any other bunny. I might have to die. is like pretty far back. Yeah, okay. Alright. I see. Okay, I'm gonna die. So the idea is get the bunny and then come back, I think. Yeah, you can go back. Alright, so that's the idea. Because this way, I just don't think I can get across. Music doesn't make it any better. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Alright, so I'm in straightforward. Bonus stage! I don't think this game has, like, a completionist thing. I mean, maybe it does. see if it has like a different ending or not. Is 
if it has an alternate ending, I'll go for it. Otherwise, it's, there's not too much incentive. Why is... It's so weird, because I'm looking for, like, number of endings, and it's just talking about Warrior Land 2. Okay. Yeah, so there's no alternate ending. It's just... It's the same ending. The stages are kind of just little bonus things, so maybe let's just... going to fight the Wario. Oh, yes! Who's this intruder in my castle? Oh crap, there's... You gotta appreciate that he, like, steals Mario's castle and then decks it out with this high-tech security system. <laughs> if you consider just Bowser's security system, yeah, Mario's on point. Oh, that's lava. Of course it's lava. Excuse me for thinking it was water, because it was blue. Wow, that, that's kind of... Okay, so it doesn't hit you until it flashes, I guess that's fine. Ah, oh, damn it. I want my bunny power back. All the lives are gonna go to this. Legs too short. Yeah, I mean, it, it lagged a little, and I guess I just panicked. That, that part right there, it's shooting as you get there. <laughs> no. Look, that, that is just dirty. Last stages go, it should be okay. It's not gonna take, I don't know, six hours. And the plus side being small, Mario is advantageous here. Bye. 
Dude. <laughs> That's set up right there. Okay, whatever. That's fine. I thought I was going to fall in. Jeez, that jump. Oh, no. Stupid. All right, uh, do over. Perfectly positioned to ah! screw you over. The thing is shooting as you get there. That part just sucks. <laughs> it's like I'm gonna eat a hit there. No matter what. I was trying to be careful. No! <laughs> Too far. Hold on. I'm taking off my hoodie. Ugh. Okay. Oh, things have gotten serious now. I've, to I've taken off my hoodie. The hoodie is off. off more. What? I mean, I guess if, if, like, body temperature gets that hot, sure, but, like, you're not gonna know that. Ah! I made it. Oh, yes! Where are you going, Mario? Eh? 
get through my beast. What is this? Is this for real? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Ah, oh, come on! <laughs> just I made it through all of them except that one. Ah! <laughs> Forgot about this. I'm jump scaring myself. Stop! Just. Do you see Mario's body going through the platform, or was that just me? Why don't you take off your pants, eh? Give the audience what they want. Really? So there's, there's just no reasonable way to avoid. There has to be a way to avoid the damage. Oh, okay, I see. I see. I have to make sure that it comes onto screen first. Comes into the view of the screen. How many lives that I had have when I started this castle? Nope, just relax. Oh, I hate this jump. <sighs> Dude. Okay, so Warrior has laid a trap. Just don't step on the pressure pad. There we go. Good stuff. <sighs> I had 24. Okay, I'm doing a bit better than I thought then. I thought I'd lost way more than that. Fire! Oh no, what fresh hell is this? Oh. Light jumps. Okay, this isn't too bad. That was, that was fine. No, this is... Oh, just run! <laughs> Excuse me, is that... What? Huh? Why am I fighting Wario as the DVD logo? I have to jump on him? Okay. Oh, no. What now, three? Okay, I, I was kidding. Oh. What? Oh, that's cheap. <laughs> Why did that come into play then? Ah, oh, yes! Welcome to my castle, Mario! It's time to fuck! Oh my god. <laughs> Can we just... <laughs> Luaria, leave me... <laughs> leave me alone. I don't know how to beat him. Oh, I'll just jump on this head, okay.
I love how he looks, by the way. It's just... That is one stank Wario. Wah! Okay, time to play is over. Oh. Got you. You have to use the momentum. Oh, yes. Goodbye. Ah, uh, ah, uh, no. Mario, please. This is way more than any bad. Ah, <laughs> oh, yo, I'm a baby. I can't do like a baby warrior voice because it just sounds like Gollum. And then it just flips. And it leaves you thinking, wait a minute. It's just an upside down M the whole time. <laughs> Thank you, Mario. Your quest is over. Yeah, so that was uh, Mario Land 2. Not all of it. I didn't do the, uh, the hidden stages, but it appears there's no reason to do the hidden stages. Ending is the same. And, you know, this was pretty casual, so I wasn't gonna try and 100% it. I just wanted to do something laid back and chill today, so I do hope you enjoyed it. But, uh, this one, yeah, childhood favorite, I think. Whilst it didn't get as much playtime as Mario Land 3 slash Wario Land, um, I just still enjoyed playing through this one. An example of a Game Boy game that is just visually good looking. And kind of, uh. kind of crazy for its time. So, I've played all the Game Boy games now <laughs> for Mario. Because that's it, he only got two. Um, once. Warrior Land was shown to be successful, Warrior kind of took over for the Game Boy. Got three sequels, Mario only got two. And then Warrior got a fourth one on the Game Boy Advance, so... And then Mario was just relegated into remakes on... on handheld, so... But, yeah. This is a neat game. The music is another one of these ones, it just makes me happy hearing it. I don't really have a lot more other memories of this one. Like, this one we did have, but it was just, I guess, for me, it was... Maybe because it was a bit easier compared to Warrior Land. Warrior Land was definitely harder, but I, I got through this one pretty easily, and then remember just not touching it that much. But it is, it is a fun game. I think it's, it's... It stands up a little bit. Like, admittedly, Game Boy games, if you don't like the retro look, you're never going to be into them, but... I mean, I don't know, there's just something about Game Boy games for me. It's just... There's a charm they have that I feel like it's, it's hard to replicate. <laughs> that bottom right face. Oh my god, that should almost become an, emo an emoji. 
like, I, I feel like I should turn that into an emoji. Maybe change the colors, but that stank warrior face, I love it. <laughs> For some reason they just made him gigantic, and then they kind of averaged his size relative to Mario. Anyway, uh, that's it. There's no continue or anything. This is one of these games that you have to reset to end, so I'm gonna say thank you for watching if you're watching here on YouTube later, watching the VOD, uh, and sticking around to the end. And if you liked the playthrough, consider clicking buttons for algorithm purposes, or maybe two other videos have popped up of other games that I've played, and you wanna check them out. Hope you do do that. But otherwise, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in.